Many biologists had not appreciated the depth and importance of evolutionary biology until genomic sequences of many organisms allowed us to see in great detail the genetic differences that accompanied organismal evolution. Combine this with modeling and mathematics and a whole variety of deep and interesting questions such as how did we get here become accessible. I majored in biology and applied mathematics at Brown University and as an undergraduate I came to appreciate the importance of theory in formulating testable hypotheses about the nature of genetic variation in populations. My PhD thesis work was with Mark Feldman at Stanford, working on population genetics theory bolstered by empirical work with Drosophila. It was largely because of this grounding in basic theoretical population genetics that Dan Hartle invited me to co-write a very influential textbook, Principles of Population Genetics. My connection with Aurus is to have done one year of postdoctoral research with Freddy Christiansen, working on selection components analysis. I'm happy to say that we're currently taking this approach to a genome-wide scale in two papers that are coming together now. We've worked on several quite distinct problems in evolutionary genomics with the fruit fly Drosophila, all centering on variation in newly discovered gene regulatory pathways. Flies launch a quite sophisticated immune response when they get bacterial infections, and the evolutionary questions center on how they can stay ahead in an arms race with bacteria. Different genetic lines of flies differ widely in their immune response, and we learn that it is largely mediated by the speed of the initial recognition of being infected. We've done a lot of work with a Drosophila Y chromosome, whose DNA is mostly repetitive and non-genic. Amazingly, variation in this non-genic part of the Y chromosome acts to modify expression levels of hundreds of genes all over the genome, and we're only beginning to understand the evolutionary implications of this. We're also using Drosophila as a model for human neurodegenerative diseases, including Parkinson's and ALS. We insert human genes into flies that cause the neurodegeneration in the eye, or knock down the fly's own genes and identify modifier genes that alter the severity of neurodegeneration. We're currently engaged in an analysis using twin data to show that there are genetic differences among humans driving differences in the gut microbiome. Russian investigators selected for tame behaviors in the silver fox with remarkable success. We applied genomics approaches to show a strong signal for specific changes in several aspects of brain function in those tame foxes. The thing that gives me the greatest pride is my legacy so far of 33 graduate students and 54 postdoctoral fellows who have trained with me and who are now doing research and teaching in 12 different countries and 21 different states in the United States. It's a great source of joy and satisfaction. I would like to invite uh, Dr. Andrew Clark to join me on the floor. <laughs> Dr. Andrew Clark is a remarkable scientist. Clark's research in population genetics and genomics is internationally renowned, and his work is very highly regarded by fellow researchers in his field. Clark received his PhD in population genetics from Stanford University and was in 1982-83 a postdoc at Aarhus University at the Institute of Ecology and Genetics. Andrew Clark has done an impressive amount of highly relevant and important work in the area of population genetics and genomics over the past 40 years. He has kept his ability of leading this field through his innovative thinking to this date. With a truly innovative approach, Dr. Clark's research has contributed to understanding the gene regulatory networks, and he has developed modern genome-wide approaches to quantitative genetics. According to the Web of Science, his scientific works has been published in more than 400 papers for, uh, for a major part in top-tier journals, with a total of more than 48,000 uh, citations and an age index of 87. This is truly impressive. Dr. Clark has kept his ties to Aarhus University since his postdoc period here. Since its establishment in 2001, several researchers at the Bioinformatics Center, Mikkel Heide Sirup, Thomas Bataillon, and Freddy Bucher Christiansen, among others, have benefited greatly from this collaboration 
including PhD students who has visited you at Cornell University during their studies. We truly expect uh, that these very close interactions will continue for many years to come. Dear Andrew, on this background, it is my greatest privilege and pleasure to confer upon you the degree Dr. Scientarium Honoris Causa at Aarhus University.